we have a great uh, deal of respect for Oakland University, uh, Greg Campy and what he's built here uh, over a period of years. Uh, this was a hard fought uh, game. Uh, obviously, for a team to be undefeated uh, in the conference slate um, just is a testament to what they've done, um, not only throughout the course of the season. I mean, they've uh, had high major opponents come through here, uh, lost in the closing minutes to Michigan State. I can go on and on about the things that they've brought to the table uh, to make them uh, the team that they are. For our guys, I thought it was just a great testament to the time invested, uh, not only in the practice uh, floor, but the way they've built relationships off the floor. When anytime you have a new coach that comes into a program, there's a lot of adjustment periods that occur. Um, the first adjustment is they had to get used to me yelling at them about defense. Uh, the second adjustment that they had to make is now uh, maybe losing the top scorer on their team in Paris Bass, and now the scouting report shifting to guys like Jaleel Hogan, who's with me today, uh, Chris Jenkins, and others. The shift of uh, injuries, you know, all the different things that have occurred, academic casualties. I couldn't be more proud, you know, of this Detroit Mercy Titans team uh, for the perseverance that they've demonstrated uh, over not only the course of the season, but over the course of change in that season. And so uh, this game is just a beginning of what is to be known as a terrific uh, Metro series, uh, not only for now, but in the future. It's something that we embrace. Uh, Greg and I have a wonderful relationship with one another, and I think it's going to just be uh, one of those things that will rival Michigan, Michigan State. It'll rival Central, uh, you know, Michigan, Western Michigan. I think it'll ri rival, you know, even the Calvins and, and that, that level. And so, again, 26 miles from each other's campus, you know, I think the fans got exactly what they had hoped for. Jaleel, uh, 39 points. Let's talk about when you felt uh, the flow was coming. You got hit a couple times, you went out the game. Just kind of talk about when you felt that rhythm. Um, my teammates just pushing me to be aggressive from the jump. Um, they said they weren't doing a double team a lot, so my teammates really pushed me to be aggressive in a post and, uh, because that's kind of my job from the team standpoint. So they just made me be aggressive, and I just wanted to do it so we can get a win. You had a huge dunk during the spurt and it seemed to fire everybody up. Just kind of talk about that sequence. Um, I just wanted to bring life to my team. Um, I feel like I'm that heart of the team. When I'm going, everybody else seems to be going. When I uh, dust myself off, everybody, everybody rallies around me. So I just wanted to bring that spark back to our group. What's it mean to the program? A lot. Um, Oakland's a great team, and this rivalry is going to be something special in a couple of years. Um, it just means a lot, and to get that first Horizon League win, it feels great. Julio, when a teammate like Chris guarantees a victory out of a rivalry game, as a teammate, do you like that, or do you go put a little undue pressure on the squad, especially on the road? Um, I'm a ride with my teammate. Uh, we ran together and done all these conditioning tests. I got I to gotta ride with my teammate. And, um, he's a little cocky, but that's who he is. Julia, are you going to ask Chris for the lottery numbers coming up? <laughs> yeah. Uh, uh, yeah, I got to make a couple dollars somehow. <laughs> uh, uh, don't bet on it. <laughs> that message was brought to you by the NCAA. <laughs> McCry, you said this was the biggest week of the season, can you kind of expound upon that? Well, basically, uh, upon arriving, I, I made this remark uh, when I uh, had finished my introductory press conference. I was looking at um, the tentative schedule um, with still uh, remaining games yet to be selected. And um, I don't know if someone was playing a joke on me or not, but all it read was Oakland, 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 Oakland. So uh, it seemed to me that the uh, appetite, you know, uh, from our administration and our fan base um, was, you know, to the tune of this Metro series. And it, it was a little uncanny for me, I must admit, because um, our uh, former natural rival was Butler, you know, in this conference. And so um, to put that level of emphasis on it um, in alumni groups, golf outings and stuff like that, everybody's asking what you're going to do against Oakland. Um, uh, clearly it was something serious to our fan base. So, you know, to get this, um, you know, uh, type of victory 
um, and to prepare to get this type of victory was not only monumental, um, but it was huge, you know, not so much in the heart of uh, me as a coach, but our fan base for sure. But he, he, he'll say all the right things and everything, but, you know, when you go home tonight, I mean, this has to be pretty special for you. Is it not? Just personally, because you put in a lot of work. And we talked about the game you said, Valpo, you were down three, a minute 40 to go. Winning your first game in this building, for you personally, that's got to be pretty important, is it not? Well, I think it's important, you know, I think it's also important, Matt, to understand, you know, the culmination of it. Um, the last player I had to coach that did what Jaleel Hogan's done tonight was Willie Green, okay, and um, score 39 points, grab 11 rebounds. You're reminded as a coach that y your successes and your failures, you know, are wrapped around the ability of your players to execute. And so, yeah, you know, quite frankly, uh, to be pointed about it, yeah, it's, it's a thrilling win. You know, it's something that I'm sure my wife would be elated to talk about when I get home as I'm, you know, dozing off listening to her. However, uh, it's a very, you know, important win for our guys and, and my, our staff. They, our staff did a tremendous job of shifting the focus uh, to changing defenses and things of that nature. I mean, we're number one in the Horizon League right now in forcing turnovers. We're number one in steals. We've done all this in two weeks. And so to make a shift like that, and to get the group engaged at this level, yeah, it is pretty special. It's not only special for me with the win, first win and all that. I'm not so ceremonious like that, but um, I'll, I'll definitely cherish this one for the, for the rest of my uh, career. You talk about forcing those turnovers, but did you expect to trouble them quite that much with the, with the traffic? With uh, this group, um, my expectations are wide open, so the answer would be no. Uh, but. I thought the evidence bared out uh, when we played, you know, against Valparaiso, who has been the class of the league over the last five years. To force them into 20 turnovers with, you know, a pretty disciplined group, I thought was very compelling. Uh, maybe not so much UIC because they had a freshman point guard who we turned over seven times by himself. And so today, for Oakland to have veterans like Sharon Dorsey Walker, uh, Martez Walker, um, uh, fit, uh, transfers, high major transfers, you know, uh, we feel pretty fortunate that that was able to occur today. Speaking of freshmen, Corey Allen, you talk about how he looked right at home here in this big game. You know, it's something to be said about the prior relationships that occur from, you know, middle school to, to high school to AAU. These guys seem so at home. I'm sure I was more nervous than the kids, quite frankly. And in these uh, backyard battles or, or uh, you know, gamesmanship brawls is something that, you know, Corey Allen, Josh McFarley, Jaleel Hogan, all these guys, Chris Jenkins, they all enjoy because these are the guys they play open gym with. You know, um, the Moneyball Pro-Am Sports League, St. Cecilia's. And they're playing against these guys all the time. So the whole uh, mystique of not really knowing this guy and, and the reputation preceding them is something that's totally eliminated in a game like this. So Kari, Greg said earlier that your squad was able to kind of force Oakland into play a little, to play a little bit more hurry. Did the game plan go a little bit uh, according to plan in terms of how the game played out? Well, you know, we, we really don't know how teams are going to respond. Um, as you probably observed, we didn't really pick up the pressure until the second half. And so um, to speed guys up, you know, was a surprise to us. Um, we're fortunate to be the benefactors of that. But, you know, with regards to the game plan, uh, we never really know what the response is going to be to that. Some teams do well with it, some teams don't.